importing a file using microimages TNT MIPS GIS software. Begin from your start menu, navigate to all programs, and expand out your microimages folder to see that you have four options, and these four options are based on different license levels. Um, you can pay for a full seat, which gives you access to all of the tools and the scripting capabilities, or you can pay for the next step down, which is an edit key, which gives you about six different tool sets. Uh, the view key is essentially a viewer with a, a few you know, basic tools, and then Atlas is the freeware product. Um, we'll navigate to MIPS since we have a full license key and basically how it works is a USB dongle plugs into your machine and so if you select MIPS but you have only a, a, a dongle that the driver recognizes as being an edit key it'll only let you open the edit window. Um, so importing a file we go main import and it opens up this nice dialog for us here and essentially why it's called importing um, you'll notice the opposite of which is exporting um, is because you're taking a file from any given file type and you're importing it into a file type that's native to the software. Um, in this case it's an RVC file or a raster vector CAD file and this raster vector CAD file format operates um, as a relational database um, so that you can house different objects um, and in this case a geo-relational database that have even um, geo geolocations that are similar or linked um, include and included into one file and then you can also store things like um, database tables and attribute tables along with that. Um, but you can see that from importing they have it sorted that you can import a raster, a vector, a shape file, a CAD file, or a database table. Um, or we can just browse through quickly all of the different options um, and explain the difference between a, a native file format and a general file format. Um, so a native file format is one that is associated specifically with a software type. So all of these, ARC coverage, ARC grid, ARC shape file, um, those are examples of ESRI uh, native file formats which are um, basically enabled for geodatabases but also work independently. Um, we have CAD files, DWG and DXF. Um, we have AirDOS and NV, which are two um, remote sensing software packages. Um, GRASS is a freeware GIS, and DRISI is another GIS software package. Um, Oracle is a relational database. Um, Pictometry uh, actually starts us on the next set. So yeah, we'll go to the... Um, so th those are examples of native file types. And then TIFF, um, TigerLine file is... Uh, census vector file, um, pictometry, and the different MODIS and Landsat are uh, satellite type files, um, JPEG 2000, JPEG, uh, Google KML is a um, is Google's geo file type, um, and then there's geotiffs and GIFs. All these are file types that are, um, you know, big TIFF. They work generally with any software type. So um, you have two different options. Uh, there's native file formats and then there's kind of generic file formats. Um, and we could tell it that we're going to look for a TIFF, but we can also say any, so that way when we select a file it has the opportunity to um, auto-detect what file type we're going to select. And so um, in your select files dialog up here you'll see that there's a variety of different files available in this directory. Um, we could navigate to the computer and go to any other like hard drive or um, uh, file storage place on the computer but we're going to go back to the home network under documents for this local library that we have and um, so you'll see that it gives you the option to sort by file type so if you only want to import a JPEG 2000 file, you can select that, um, or just a shape file, and you can also tell it which one you're looking for, so say we're looking for that TIFF, I have to just click all and then click back and it'll show us the TIFF file, or a GIF file, whatever file uh, we're looking for. So um, we're actually going to import the TIFF, and I can select the icon once and it auto adds it. If I select the wrong one, I can just say remove, or if I have a bunch of them I don't want, I can say remove all, um, so it removes it, but uh, in this case we actually do want that TIFF file, so I'll click the text and say add, 
and it says one object added to the selected set. And we'll say OK. And just like I said, it auto detects. Um, you have either big TIFF, GeoTIFF, or TIFF options, and um, we're going to take the TIFF option. So um, you can also remove um, or remove all from this window as well in the event that you wanted to change. Or you can just go back in and reselect files. Um, and so once you're sure you have the file that you want to import, you say next, and it gives you a dialog for import parameters. Um, you always want to select average pyramiding because it affects the display that in your viewer. Um, and generally you're going to want to run um, standard lossless compression. Um, import to a TNT internal native format and you want multibands as a single composite and we don't want anything set as our null value um, and we don't have 3D properties or um, reference systems in this case because we're just importing a raster TIFF, we're not importing a GeoTIFF. And so then at the bottom you have um, three different options. You can import the files one at a time. So say we had three, it would do import the first file, then the second file, then the third file, one after another. And so if it took two minutes to import a file, it would take six minutes for this dialog to be open for three files. Or you can select QJob and um, you point your output directory uh, back into downloads. Oops, sorry, back into home directory documents. Um, and we'll just call this the same file name that it has, which is 3910097. And we'll say create file, and then um, because it's a relational database, RVC is, you have to have an object for, a name for the object that you're being is being added to the geodatabase, so the object name is D7 and say OK. And um, since we hit QJob, it invokes this job manager. And so it's running right now just one file. But in another tutorial, we'll show you what happens when you load multiple files um, and create an environment where you want to batch. Um, this is a great dialog that has um, a lot of different options to it. Um, but you can see that it gives you runtime. And um, if we open up the documents folder here, we can see that it's already created the shell at 8 kilobytes. And as soon as it's done processing, it'll have a file size that is more comparable to um, a real file. And the RVC changed from 8 kilobytes to 381, and we look in the done, we notice that our runtime was a minute 45. So we now have an RVC created out of our TIFF, and if we double click that, it's going to bark at us, fine. We'll say main display, new 2D display, go in here our documents, open the RVC, add the TIFF that's embedded inside the RVC, and there's our file.